Hi, fifth grade. All right, so we have been reading through the first few chapters of The View from Saturday this past few weeks. I hope you guys are enjoying it so far. I think E.L. Konigsberg has shown that she is very good at creating interesting and complex characters. As we saw with Mixed Up Files, there's something relatable and there's a deeper personality about each of them, and I hope you're starting to see that so far with the characters we've met already in this book. So what we're going to be doing is a little quiz every few chapters, and each time I'll go through, we'll review stuff from it, and make sure that everybody kind of understands like the basics and the core of things going on in the story. So today I'm going to be reviewing the chapters one to three study guide. You all should have already sent me a picture of this, so you got credit for completing it, but now I want to make sure that you have the correct answers so you can study and then take the chapters one to three quiz later this week. So, um, as I go through, make sure that one, you're checking for correctness, and two, if I've gone too fast or you missed something, just pause it or rewind a little bit so you can listen again. All right, I'll go through. It should be up at the top here. <laughs> Number one, which says, what was the name of the competition that the Epiphany students are in that is the Academic Bowl? They are in the Academic Bowl. Number two. Why is Mrs. Olinsky very uncomfortable during the final round of the competition? And it is because it's really cold in the room. So she mentions, like, being uncertain, like, is it nerves or what? But then she realizes quickly, no, she's confident in her kids. It's just that it's so cold. Someone turned the air conditioning on, but it's too chilly still for that. Now, you guys always ask, like, is it okay if I put... If you put, because the air conditioning is on and she's cold, that's basically the same thing as what I said. As long as you're going to recognize if in a multiple choice thing that that's the correct answer, then you're good. If your answer is so different that it wouldn't be considered a, quote, synonym to mine, that's when you might have an issue. If you do have an issue with any of the answers that I've brought up, email me and I can clear something up for you. Don't just go, I don't know, and then take the test later in the week. Check with me first if you think there's something you don't understand. Number three, what does B&B &B stand for in B&B &B letter? And B&B &B stands for bread and butter. Number four, who are the main characters related to the grandparents that live in Century Village? And they are Nadia, oh wait. Oh, I left one out. Nadia, Ethan, and Noah. Because Noah's grandparents are there. He's the one who goes to visit. Nadia's grandfather is there. And then Ethan's grandmother is there. I left one out. All right, well, I don't know where my pen is, but I'll add that in. So, just like me, if you realize that you missed something, add it in when you're done. Number five. What is Alan Diamondstein going through at the time of his dad's wedding? And that is a divorce. I don't remember Alan. Colby. Okay, I already tried to film this once and he started barking. Colby, no barking. If he starts going, I'm just gonna keep I'm just gonna keep filming this video. Uh, he's going through a divorce and he is just singularly like awkward and kind of unpleasant to be around because he just like is always such a downer and just kind of talking about stuff and just like, oh, nothing works out, like, ooh. Which is just a bummer for everybody. Number six, who is getting married? And I put, said, put both names. Don't just be like, Grandma and Grandpa of these two kids. Nope. Margaret Draper and Izzy Diamondstein. Margaret Draper and Izzy Diamondstein. So we've got Nadia's Grandpa and Ethan's Grandma. Number seven. What new skill does Noah learn as a result of his trip to Century Village? And that is calligraphy. He learns how to do that beautiful kind of um, almost like cursive but more elegant handwriting. And it, there's a second part to the question, who taught him? And that was Tilly Nachman. Oh, here, hold it up for the name. Tilly Nachman. What are some reasons why the superintendent looks expensive? So this is in one of the jump backs to current. So the story is written where they're in the current moment 
in the academic bowl and then it jumps back in time to different parts of the kids story and kind of their background together so some of the reasons he looks expensive this is just overview here uh, a perfectly fit suit so he's clearly had a tailored suit he has french cuffs which is a certain type of uh, shirt that kind of comes out and sticks out and is folded a certain way underneath a coat he has fancy cufflinks, which are the little metal things that you use to clasp instead of having a button to clasp your shirt together at the bottom. Um, you have this little a link that would um, kind of cuff your shirt. And he has coiffed hair, which means it's like fancily done back. So maybe he has gel or hairspray or something in to make it look extra uh, nice. Hey, MJ. Can you call Colby? He's over here chewing his bone really loudly. Or come take the bone. <laughs> Colby. All right, number nine. Who, so this is the next page. Who is the redhead in Mrs. Olinsky's group? And that is Nadia. Nadia is also the only girl in the group. Number 10. What does Alan trip over and hurt his ankle on? This is me, jump, this is me jumping back a little bit. And it is a red wagon. And extra thing that I put was the red wagon with the cake in it because they had had the wedding cake and that was the only way they could think of to transport it. If they tried to carry it, it would have toppled. They need something steady to roll it on. Number 11. How is Nadia feeling about her dad at the beginning of the summer? Why? And she's annoyed by him. So she's feeling kind of impatient and like a little frustrated. And um, it's because he's been hovering. He's not used to being alone just with her. He feels guilty about the divorce with um, her mother and how everything's going and so he's been kind of hovering and being like hey how are you what's going on what's up and just makes her feel kind of like awkward and um understandably a little irritated with him number 12 whose father is dr gershom what is dr gershom's job and his um dr gershom is the father of noah and his job is a dentist. If you put doctor, then you weren't reading very carefully. Number 13. What couple's hobby is finding sea turtle nests and helping the turtles hatch? And that is Margaret and Izzy. So the older couple that just got married are also very interested in finding sea turtle nests and helping them. Um, obviously sea turtles to a degree can handle themselves, but there's also so many, and depending on the time of year and conditions, as you read in the chapter, it is good to have um, people who are knowledgeable help and make sure it goes smoothly. Number 14, what play did Ethan and Nadia and their family go to see? And that was Phantom of the Opera. Ethan is very interested in theater. He's fascinated by set design and structure and everything that goes into it. And uh, was very excited about the idea of attending the play and he enjoyed it very much. Um, and you're going to see how that comes up later in the story. Number 15. Why does Nadia say that Margaret was interfering in her life? And that's because Margaret is the one who kind of coordinated to get Nadia's mom the job in New York. Now, Nadia knows in her, you know, in her mind, like deeper down, she realizes that that's not the reason her parents got divorced, but she does associate now Margaret with the reason her mom is further away. Her mom already wanted to be further. Um, she wanted kind of that new life, but Margaret's the one who helped her get a job with Dr. Gershom. And that's why uh, Nadia kind of blames her and thinks that she was like interfering or like butting in on what was going on in her life number 16 um okay sorry quick thing though i know people are gonna be like well i put this it's because it's the essence is margaret got her, her mom the job in new york margaret helped nadia's mom get the job in new york margaret made that happen so any way that you've written that is what that is. All right. Number 16. How does Ethan keep kids from sitting next to him on the bus? So what Ethan does is he sits in the back, puts his backpack on the seat next to him, and then he kind of swings his leg up on the backpack. And by taking, by taking up that much space, 
um, it's easier to not move. People are less likely to try to sit with you if it's like, seems like so taken of a seat instead of just like, oh, there's some space, I'll just sit down. So, sits in the back, puts his backpack on the seat, swings his leg on the backpack. Uh, but one person doesn't mind asking, and that is Julian Singh, who we get introduced to here. So how does Julian Singh dress oddly, and what sort of accent does he have? So we see first Julian outside of the bus with his father. His father is wearing a turban, and he is dressed um, outside of their, um, the big house that they have just bought, Sillington House. Julian is wearing shorts knee socks and he has a leather book bag and that's like kind of a side strap like fancy bag that has like the top that swings down not like an actual just backpack that most kids have so shorts knee socks and he has he's carrying a leather book bag accent that he has is british um and ethan says he is kind of this is sort of given away one when he first speaks but also by the fact that he says occupied instead of taken when he asks about the seat next to ethan he says this is seat occupied uh, which is a more British way to ask. Number 18. What happened to Mrs. Olinsky as a result of her automobile accident? So we don't get a ton of detail about this, but she was in a car accident, and the result of that was that she was paralyzed from the waist down, which is uh, a term... So the proper term for that is, means that she is a paraplegic. So if you wrote became a paraplegic, that would be one way to say it. Paralyzed from the waist down is also another way to say that. Number 19. Who keeps being a bully to Julian? And that bully is Hamilton Knapp. We do not like Hamilton Knapp. Hamilton Knapp, in fact, writes an unkind word on Julian's bag. And you see how in the later parts of the chapter that you guys read together... He, uh, Julian kind of takes it and decides to change it. He draws on his bag and makes a beautiful design using the mean word, changing it from to passenger. Uh, so it says that I'm a passenger on planet Earth, which is still a little bit, um, hi Colby. <laughs> still a little bit uh, silly and odd, but is interesting and shows his creativity. Um, and you also hear later on in the chapter that you guys read, um, Ethan, in talking to Julian, makes a joke at Hamilton's expense, basically making fun of Hamilton, saying that he's really the uh, unkind person. Re he's really the rude and uh, dumb one, which was what Hamilton was implying by writing something unkind on Julian's bag. Number 20. What does Julian invite the other three students over for? And it is for tea, which... When they get the invitation, I think catches them all by surprise. You see each of them sort of being like, why am I going to this? Varying degrees of interest in it. They're like fascinated, but also like, what, what's, go what's happening here? And I think if he had just outright said to them, want to come over? Some of them might have been like, uh, I don't know. But because he kind of left little clues and made it interesting and uh, a little bit of mystery there, they were all like, hmm. You know, they saw that he went to some trouble, and they were fascinated and curious. And because they were curious, they all came. And each of them, without being told to do so, felt the need to um, pick something in particular. So, 21. What gift do each of the three guests bring to Sillington House? Nadia brings a puppy, who they later name... I'm hoping some of you are saying it right now. I don't know. I mean, It's really weird going through without you guys, but I wanted to have a separate Zoom call lesson, didn't want to do two. Uh, the puppy's name is Alice, or that's what they decide to name it. And uh, I'm sure you can guess why Alice, based on some of the other things that came up earlier in this chapter. Uh, Noah brings a calligraphy set, which once again makes sense for him based on his earlier story. And Ethan brings a puzzle, which really doesn't have anything to do with his particular story, except that he thinks it's the kind of thing that Julian might like, and he wanted to find one that was interesting. Um, now, he did not end up with the puzzle that he originally wanted. The original one he wanted was the complete, like, circle one. But 
still brings a puzzle and they end up doing it and liking it. So that's extra fun for the group. 22. What secret talent does Julian reveal after the four kids finish making a puzzle? And that talent is close up magic. Sleight of hand is a term that's used for the ability to perform magic, but so skillfully um, that people don't see it, even though they're up close to you. So close up magic is the skill that he reveals to them. And I think it's just such a cool thing about him. 23, what talent does Noah promise to teach the other three kids? Calligraphy. And 20, oh, two, I put two 23s. How is it that I always, even when we're not at school, make a numbers error when I'm numbering one of these things? 24, or 23 the second. What name does Nadia choose for the little group? And that name is The Souls. And in fact, because uh, she decided this would be her prize, um, after they did the little wallpaper thing, she decided she got, wanted to pick her prize and she chose her prize as them accepting the name, no arguments, no changes. Um, and I think that shows a fun thing about her personality as well. Each of these kids at this point feels bonded in a weird way to each other. And this is even before any connection with them being in a group at school, which is, um fascinating and also just shows you deeper parts of their characters. Like I said, she's very good at writing deep characters. There's another book by her that we're not going to read, but I will recommend later on. And you can just see that the depth of the children that she writes is so fascinating. And they're people that you could know. They're children that you want to know. Claudia and Jamie are kids that I recognize in the way they act as brother and sister and the way that I feel. I mean, like Claudia wanting to be correct and wanting to do things properly. It's interesting. All right, let's go through possible things that might come up. Hint, hint. <sighs> Which means I'm going to put a bonus on here. So what's the name of Nadia's dog? Not the dog that she gives to Julian, but her personal dog, and that is Ginger. And Ginger is a... Oh, hopefully you all said genius. Because that's what she always says. Who is the author of this book? E.L. Konigsberg. That would have been harder if we hadn't just read a book by the same author. What state is Century Village in? Is in Florida. What grade are all the main characters in? Sixth. What is Mrs. Olinsky's first name? It is Eva Marie. I suppose it could be Ava Marie. I'm not positive on the pronunciation because I haven't heard it out loud. And last one, where do the sea turtles go for five to ten years to graze and grow? And that is the Sargasso Sea. Alright, well my camera's not going to adjust to it. You can look back in the book for that one then. Because <laughs> I... Um... Don't know if I can get the camera to do it, but we are going to take a quiz on this later in the week. Now that you've corrected your study guide, study it before you take your quiz. This is meant to be taken without your book, without your study guide. It is not an open book test. I know that I'm not there to control that, but I would like you on your honor to do so because I think it's important that you guys are reading and working on that kind of um, memory of the characters and building on your knowledge of them before we continue on in the story. So I'm posting this. It's going to be Monday when you are watching this. Maybe. I don't know. You can watch it whenever. Um, I would recommend watching it relatively early and I'm giving you it early so you have more time before Friday to fix your study guide, study your study guide, and then without looking at your study guide or your book, take the Google Forms quiz that's been sent out. I don't recommend just blindly taking the quiz and then watching this video later and being like, oops. So please watch this first. It was in the notes. Please watch this first. <laughs> please. I love you guys so much. I hope that you're enjoying the story like I am. I will, if you're watching this Monday morning, I'll see you guys at lunch today. If you're watching this later on, then it was fun seeing you at lunch. 
I will talk to you guys more later and I will record more of Sisters Grimm later this week. Bye guys!